Hello, I'm Aislinn Sarnacki, and you've discovered the Borealis Podcast, where we talk with fascinating people who research, work in, play in, and think about the Maine outdoors. On today's episode, we meet with competitive sponsored whitewater kayaker, Alex Horn. I think the expectation is that I'm not as good usually, but I love to come out and be like, no, I am. Like, I'm gonna compete with you. And I love that we get to compete with men in this sport because I don't think there's an advantage to being a man when you're paddling. That's just ahead. Production support of Borealis is provided by the Nature Conservancy in Maine and Poland Spring and listeners like you. Thank you. Alex Horn is an optometrist by profession, but the whitewater racing community knows her as a fierce competitor who's passionate about growing the sport. I met up with her at the Elliott Lamb Memorial Race in Hamden, the first race of Maine's whitewater racing season. Like many racers, Horn started out as a whitewater rafting guide. I asked her how she went from rafting guide during the summers in college to becoming a sponsored competitive kayaker. When I started out, I raft guided for five years while I was getting my doctorate. And then when I was done with my schooling, I decided that I wanted it to be more of a hobby now that I had a job. And so I got more into kayaking because I could do it by in my own vessel. And um, I had other friends that kayaked, so they helped me to f- get some of the fundamentals, which is really hard. Like when your kayak goes upside down, how to ride it by yourself, like to snap it back upright in the water. Um, so all those skills are really kind of hard to learn at first. But if you get past that initial learning curve that's really difficult, then the sport just opens up for you. And from there, I started kayaking, you know, all of my free time was how can I be kayaking? And um, I took it pretty far. Now I moved to West Virginia just so I can kayak. I kayak 250 days a year usually. (laughs) And um, I got sponsored by a kayak company. And it's just kind of validated that I love this sport and I love spending my time doing it. But you really do have to put a lot of work into it on the upfront to be able to enjoy all of it on the back end. So how did you get noticed by a kayak company to get sponsored? What are some of your successes that you've had? So some of the things they look for, like how do you do when you compete in races or other events like that? But a lot of what they look for is how are you part of the community and how can you help grow the community? Mm -hmm. So one of my biggest passions within Whitewater is just getting other people into it and especially getting women into it because when I started, it was about 80% men and 20% women. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just love that it's an empowering sport because it's difficult. But once you are doing it, you really just feel like, oh, this is awesome. This gives me so much strength. So I think that, you know, that's part of it for me is how can I get other people into it? How can I get other people excited about this? Yeah. It, well, what is it like? Cause some people will never try it. You right. know, it's, it's not for everybody. Right. Um, what makes it so appealing to you? What is it like that experience of going through this these rapids and going around rocks and yeah it is so exciting you know you just really have to get tough but you also have to be like an adrenaline junkie you have to be really excited to get out there and there's times when I'm doing a run that's hard or new that I feel like sick to my stomach before I do it but you know you just like you want to level up like I always like want to be doing something that's harder and trying something new and And the great thing about whitewater kayaking is that it brings you to all these beautiful places. Like I've kayaked here in Maine in these, you know, remote canyons and beautiful gorges. And then I've gone to Ecuador and done the same thing, paddled in the rainforest. And you're just like, nobody would ever see this unless they were in a kayak. So you just feel so blessed to be out there in the wilderness and experiencing something like that. Yeah, I bet you do get to places that actually no one else sees yeah they're totally remote like you there's no road in sight like you're out there and you know you have to get out of there by kayaking out of there how do you personally inspire like how do you personally help encourage people get to get into the sport like if they're considering it um is there anything that you say to them or 
Yeah. Help them out. I think when they're starting out, I really just try to encourage them that it was difficult for all of us when we started. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I ran the race that we did today and I swam three times out of my kayak and I was so cold and I wasn't having fun. And now I think back and I was like, you know, I could have never gotten to where I am today unless I had that experience. But, you know, you have to kind of take your punches early on. And I always tell people, I'm like, you don't get good overnight. You really just, it's like any other sport. You really just have to put your time into it. But when I'm personally helping people, usually I'm helping them when with their role, getting their boat back up and learning that technique so they're confident to like take it out on the river, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is the and, hardest part. <laughs> and for people who don't know what a role is, that's like when you go into the water yes. upside down and they have to get back up. Yes, yeah, so you have to ride it by using your hips and your paddle. And it's a hard technique to teach somebody because of course they're inverted when they're doing it. And so it takes a special person to teach somebody. I say that, you know, it's difficult for me to teach people, but some people are really good at that. But I think that's the best way, you know, helping people get the gear they need and then helping people get the skills they need to kind of break in. Cause that is definitely the hardest part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you came back in, how long have you been involved in this race and then you choose to come back to Maine to help with this yeah. race and then the next race? Yes. Why, what are, first of all, what are the races that you help with and why did you make that choice to do that? Yeah, so there's these two races this weekend, which are in memory of Elliot Lamb. He was my boyfriend that passed in 2015 and these were his home runs. And I come back for the community, mostly for these runs because they're awesome races. And I, I just love seeing everyone and being on the river with them and, uh, you know, remembering Elliot. And then um, I'm also involved in the main whitewater championship. And that's more of our class four or five whitewater kayaking event. And I do that because I really love to promote Maine whitewater. I just think that we have such a f- good variety of good rivers here. And I don't even think people know they exist for the most part. So what we t- try to do with Maine Whitewater Championship is raise awareness that there's these two wonderful rivers, the Kennebec and the Penobscot up here in Maine, and that they run every day throughout the summer. You can have a great time on them. And um, we just advertise a lot all the way up and down the East Coast to get people to come up for those events. And a lot of times they do. People come up as far as D.C., New York, um, just to see what's up up here and see what's going on. Great. Well, is there anything else that you'd want people to know about the whitewater community uh, and these types of events um yeah i think in general i just like i love to encourage people to give it a try there's a lot of resources you know even if it seems like it's this really niche sport that you couldn't get into there's a lot of wonderful people that would help you get into it and there's events all winter long in pools all across the state where you can learn to roll your kayak and people will help you do that i think we all just want more people to participate in the sport. We're all really excited when somebody says, oh, this is my first race or this is my first year kayaking because you can just see that they're excited and you want, you know, you want to share that excitement you have with them. So, um, yeah, that's cool that the community is one of those smaller communities. It seems welcoming. Yeah. Like- wants more because sometimes with outdoor communities maybe not so much the case yeah you have to be you know at a certain level to be accepted sometimes Mm -hmm. but within whitewater i think there's variable levels that you can find a group of people that would paddle things that you like to paddle Mm -hmm. and i just think that they're really welcoming in general i was really welcomed in when i started so oh cool cool Cool. yeah i was curious how that went just being a woman coming into it yeah I think when I was first starting nobody took me seriously they were just like you know you'll give this up but I think you know for me part of it is like I'm an athlete and I'm gonna perform and like I'm gonna get this even though it's hard but um yeah I think they were as accepting as I'd expect them to be I think the expectation is that I'm not as good usually but I love to come out and be like no I am like I'm gonna compete with you and I love that 
we get to compete with men in this sport because I don't think there's an advantage to being a man when you're paddling. I think it, there, it's lesser than with other sports where it takes a lot of brawn to like do well in this sport. In other sports, like with this, you really have to have good technique, read the water well, navigate the rapids right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different factors that kind of level the field between men and women. So I love chasing the boys. <laughs> well, what's what are some of your accomplishments as far as like, some of the harder things that you've done with this sport yeah personally. since moving to west virginia i've had a quite like a big bump up in my skill level and that's just because the white water there is harder but last year i won the race on the golly river which was really exciting and on the new river and um, I love racing, but I'm also a freestyle kayaker, which is where you do a lot of aerial tricks, like you jump in the air and do front loops and all these tricks that get scored. And um, I love that sport more so than racing even. Um, and I love competing in that. So this year I competed for the USA women's team and I didn't make it, but it was my first time competing. But um, I just, I like the competition aspect of it, but I love that there's so many different types of kayaking. You can kind of pick what you like to do. If you just like to go down river, that's cool. If you like to race, that's awesome. But if you want to do like freestyle and do tricks, that's cool too, which is more like skateboarding and snowboarding. You get graded on like your style and stuff. But... Good luck moving forward with you. your kayaking and just the getting people into the community and having fun with those competitions. Yeah, thank you. To learn more about whitewater racing in Maine, check out the Maine Canoe and Kayak Racing Organization, also known as MACRO. Their website is macro.org. A huge thanks to Alex Horn for taking time during the race to answer some questions for this podcast. As one of the organizers of the race, she was in high demand that day. I'm Aislinn Sarnacki, and thanks for joining us for the Borealis Podcast. Podcast.